Hi, I'm Stuart, this is Wall Paint Figures, and we're going to go through nine tips and review points on these new plastic Warlord games, Epic Scale American Civil War, you may have got on front of War Games Illustrated free. I know I did, I was keen to have a look at these. So stick with me, we'll have a super extra tip if you're prepping them at the end as well. <laughs> So, if you're new to our channel, that's great, welcome. Uh, if you like what you see, subscribe, uh, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell. Uh, that way you'll get updates when we post new videos. Uh, or drop a comment below, uh, and I'll get back to you pretty quickly. Otherwise, on with the video. So, number one, what are these little things? Well, if you had to close to look at these, and the challenge on War Games Illustrated, you'll know they are the latest entry into the War Games market, the American Civil War War Games market to be specific from Warlord Games, designed to be compatible with their Black Powder 2nd edition rules. They are hard plastic, not resin, and plastic combined like Plastic Soldier Company, and that's a big plus in my eyes to start off with. Okay, number two, how big are they? Yeah, and we're not fishermen. Um, they are the epic scale Warlord claim to be. They're about 13 and a half millimeters tall. They're not made to any specific scale. They're just made to a size that they like and that will look good on the battlefield. So they're not 10 mil. They're not 15 mil. And I'll show you a comparison later. Well, isn't all this 13 and a half mil on epic scale just just a big? marketing scam isn't it a bit weird and incompatible well you've got to have a look at the market as it is at the moment and if you have a look over the interview with john stallard i'll put a link to that below from warlord games i agree with him in some respects because you look at 15 mil market and what have you got you've got 15 mil so you've got your essexes uh and the like but you've also got blue moon at old glory doing there close to 18 mil although some of them will go in depending on the pose then you've got at the other end, obviously you've got your 10 mil, but then you've got something like Clister, which is nearer to 12 millimeter. Yeah, so 15 mil and how you measure it anyway is a moot point. And once you put these on the bases, it could certainly raise them up to appropriate size. So number four, are they going to fit with any of your existing figures, like 15 mil, for example? I've got 15 mil uh, American Civil War. Well, let's have a look. You'll see the little video in the corner. I've clipped some one of the frames off here, and I'm comparing it directly to the 15 millimeter American Civil War that I've got here. Now there are a variety of makes. In the next little clip, you'll see me comparing them to just some 10 mil Pendraken and Cluster Fantasy, for example. I don't have 10 mil uh, American Civil War. A friend of mine in Penarthen District War Games Gaming Club does Gaming Society just changed the name um, so he could compare but you know that's what you're looking at in comparison so how detailed are they uh, plastic like a lot of stuff and especially with plastic it's only good as a sculpt and it's only good as a tooling for the injection molding uh, in this case I would say these are pretty good I've got some close-ups here you can see you can see the cords on the drums you can see some nice facial features you know the old schnoz um, and you can see wood grain on the artillery wheels uh, it looks pretty good actually and I think they'll paint up well that's a subject of another video so what's the difference between Confederate and Union on these sprues well sweet FA as they say there is none when you look at the American Civil War, it's one of the great ones to do simply because the uniforms are also of negligible differences unless you take specialist units like the Iron Brigade for example or Zuars when they're wearing their clown uniforms as a friend of mine put it uh, then there's very little uh, changes frock coats, short cut coats, there's forage cap capes, uh, large felt hats all sides wear them. There's some obviously difference in the colours, but that's all there is a lot of the time. So at this sort of scale, you can get away with those liberties because you're not going to do the tiny intricacies of the water tint, etc. 
uh, and the rifles and the muskets, you know, different types, which there were a considerable amount, certainly on the Confederate side. Uh, you're not going to do it. It's not important. What's important is the overall look. Uh, so there is no difference and in a way that's great because you can balance those forces, paint off the box set and your freebies exactly how you want to in the proportions you want to. Uh, and it makes it cheaper in some way and you can do that with metal plate figures as well at 15mm. Uh, and you know they're, they're all together so it's great. So the bases you've got them with them, are they relevant, are they useful? Well. This is the basis that came with the free boots. You'll see the artillery stands, command, and sorry, the infantry stands. I'll get this right the artillery and the command. Um, just plastic. The infantry have little lugs on the bottom that you stick in those holes. Um, it's really a subjective question. Black powder, which these are made for the second edition, and obviously to go with glory, hallelujah. They don't really go on both sides, it's all about frontage. Uh, so, in a way, the bases are relevant for them. Although, how you distinguish between a small, medium, tiny unit and the rules, I don't know. There are rules within the box set, which is £92 from Warlord Games, and allegedly these adapt to the epic scale. Uh, it's a simplified version of the Black Powder and Gloria Hallelujah rules. I'm not sure what's in it. I haven't bought the box set. Um, I've got my own collection of 15mm ACW. It's not something I'm going to get in properly into this is. But I needed to do this for you. Now in terms of base sizes, the base is provided. And I'm going to look, consult my uh, cheat sheet. The And if you look up there, there's going to be a picture as well. The infantry bases are 60mm by 20mm and you will take two, so that's one, two of these in double rank. Now you can put them together but we'll come back to that. Uh, the artillery is 40mm by 30mm. They come in three pieces, so you have one, two wheels with the crew attached, which is a very different way of doing it, and the artillery carriage, carriage, carriage here with the barrel on it, obviously. The command base, as you saw earlier, just a simple 20 by 20. So it's not critical, and you can sort of rebase your own size if you want to cut the lugs off. Obviously, you are restricted by the length here because this isn't like some of the clister ones, you can't rip these apart because clister of metal and, and make do, as it were, like I've done on some of the fantasy. Uh, you, you, these are hard plastic together, so you would be lucky maybe there if you could slice through perhaps, but you'd make a right mess, and to be honest, it'd ruin the overall effect. So you have got what you've got. So number eight, what is the quality like? Uh, how good are they for prepping? Well, they're hard plastic. I like hard plastic. It's simple to do. Uh, if you look at the close-up there, there is very little mould lines and the mould lines you've got are minimal and non-intrusive so they're quite fine so they're going to be easy to scrape so they're going to be quick to assemble because they come as that clean around them a little bit as much as you want to at the end of the day and whack them on the basis jobs are good one. I'll show you a tip right at the end of the video to how to make that easier as well so I think they're quite easy to prep I think they're going to be quite easy to paint. I've seen some examples. Uh, I'm going to do my own for you in a variety of techniques. So you can have a look at that in the next video coming up in about a week's time. Number nine. Are they worth the money? It's 92 quid of hard-earned cash. Now, at the moment, in the middle of a pandemic, in a lockdown, it's a brave move. It was probably in the diary to launch these. For what you get... And his picture of the listing of what you get. Uh, if you're a new newbie to either wargaming or American Civil War and you're really interested in it, it's probably quite a good buy. You get a lot of troops, you can fight a variety of size of battles. Um, there are additions coming later in the year. I hope the if you listen to John Stallard, potentially January, but it depends on COVID and staffing and all sorts. So there's going to be more cavalry, more artillery, probably famous commanders, I reckon. 
they'll do a pack of and they're going to do zouaves uh, so you're going to have a bit of variety as well depends how they price them and hopefully they'll do them all, all in hard plastic black powder are a fairly simple set of rules to grasp uh, you, they're a bit marmite, you love them or hate them uh, I don't mind them and they can be adapted Glory Hallelujah is a great set that goes along with that uh, written by Dr David James and they've been even further simplified in the set. So to get into the hobby, I think it's a really good set. If you've got an existing collection, no. Uh, probably not. Unless you can make be sure these are going to be compatible and they're not going to look weird. Uh, and I shall have a look. Because uh, my bases are, I think they're 20 or an inch square with four troops on. So they're a little bit looser than these anyway then it's not going to be for you and I probably wouldn't advise you to do it um, unless you fancy just throwing 92 quid at Warlord Games and having a bit of fun um, so for a newbie I think it's really good for the rest not so sure so there are the nine points on a review of Warlord Games hard plastic epic scale American Civil War uh, I reviewed the freebie off the front of War Games Illustrated, so I haven't reviewed the full set because I didn't want to spend £92 because I can't afford that at the moment. So if you've got any comments, pop them below. If you bought them or if you you know bought the full set, let me know. Okay, now for that bonus tip. Very simple, grab yourself some liquid polystyrene cement. This is an AK one. Take the excess off. Now, after you've cleaned the mould lines off, there might be some left. So we just gently take this round the line of the mould lines. And the liquid polystyrene cement will dissolve the mould line without actually dissolving the figure, which is great. And as you can see me doing here, because I haven't done that bit yet, on top of the hat, etc. You can actually do it instead of cleaning up. These have so little in terms of mould lines. So there we go. I hope you like that. Uh, we're going to try and upload videos a lot more regularly now. Um, if you did like that, if you can subscribe, ring my bell, uh, comment, and that would be great. Otherwise, we'll see you soon, and don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well. Cheers, guys.